Welcome to Unedited, episode 15. My name is Jordan. I'm joined by... Episode 15. <laughs> by Ethan. Yeah. <laughs> you didn't say your name. You're fighting this now. I made you say it this time. You're on protest, aren't kinda you? Kind of worked out, actually. I thought it did. Kind of like that. How's your long weekend? I'm doing pretty good, but I need to get psyched up for this episode. Sorry. Uh, you? you asked how my long weekend is, and I recognize I'm doing pretty good isn't an appropriate answer. Yeah. But do you want to give me some slaps to wake me up here? You know what? Give me a little bit. There you go. Oh, yeah. There Is we that go. better? Yeah, that's a little bit better. <laughs> I'm not going to smack you. It's a very gentle hand. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Well, now, whoo, I'm yeah. feeling good. Okay. Just flip the cool. table. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Just rage out. Yeah. Um, my long weekend, I didn't even know it was a long weekend until last night. Okay. Somebody said, what'd you do for the long weekend? And I said, when was that? Yeah. And they said, yesterday. <laughs> and I said, okay. Everything. Was, it was good. <laughs> everything just rolls into one. Eh? Yeah. How about you? So it was good. Yeah. Yeah. It was good. 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 Came to church on the weekend. Uh, did some stuff with the girls. Went and played some mini golf. Uh, got out a few times. Uh, football game. The really? Bombers beat the Rough Riders. No, Always whoa. makes the long weekend. Is this a, a big deal? Thing. Is this a, a beautiful big deal, thing. Jordan, yes, It is, is a big deal. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so I guess you watched, you were in, you were involved. I was. I, I, honestly, it was a pretty stressful game, to be honest with you. I, yeah. I, I paced. Uh, the neighborhood probably heard me twice. The neighborhood? I'm not, I'm not joking. I yell quite loud when I get really? excited. Yeah. Yeah. And your kids was, get scared and run away? My kids were out of the house. I tried to arrange it that way for this game. Mm, so they don't so, get the so, mad dad you know, coming you know, they, I've scared them a few times. They're used to it now when I watch oh, okay. football. Okay. So, But uh, the first one of the year always kind of gets them a little bit, oh, what's going on over there kind of thing, right? Yeah. Because so, I, I don't think I sat for a single play in this game. <laughs> so I, I think I stood for the most part. I was pacing the living room. And... Uh, just yeah, just kind of enjoyed the game that's peacefully. So, funny, man. so. <laughs> that's actually so funny. I love that. I love that you're like that. This is one of my favorite games of the year, though, because yeah. uh, and it, it's it, they're playing again this weekend in Winnipeg, and they call it the Banjo Bowl. Mm -hmm. But uh, if you lose Labor Day, I just feel like that's the one where everyone's got the day. Like most people have the time off on Sunday, right? Mm -hmm. And they're they're tuned in, they're glued in, and uh, Saskatchewan's got a history of winning that one. I think they won like. I, don't, I think it was something like 15 of the last 19. Mm. But the Bombers now have won three of the last four. So we're kind of seeing a bit of a, Interesting. a switch the other way, right? Yeah. And so so I just don't like losing that game. I feel like, uh, you know, I got too many uh, great Saskatchewan people in my life who, who tease me after that game. Yeah. And it's nice when I get to be the one. Now you get to Pestering them, right? Yeah. So. <laughs> you know, the uh, the only... I used to watch the uh, Labor Day Classic, right? That's what it's called, yes. isn't it? Yeah, yeah. And the Banjo Ball when I was in college because i came from manitoba to college in saskatchewan that's right so there's lots of fun around it we had a yeah. good time yeah. you know one of the reasons that i'm not interested in keeping up with the riders aside from for family like if my father-in-law is watching i'll watch and i'm happy to watch the riders and cheer for them and stuff you know um but uh it's because riders fans are really rude <laughs> <laughs> That's, wow, that's a broad you just throwing it out there, right? Eh? Like but, that. Eh? Uh, so many people when I moved here from Manitoba were so mean to me about the riders that yeah. I was like, I'll never watch the riders because of you guys. <laughs> like you guys have ruined this for me, so I'm not going to. You just took something uh, that was going to be fun and made it <laughs> battle for you, eh? So yeah, but uh, I mean, so I do watch with family and stuff. I still enjoy. Hilarious. I haven't let it cripple my life or anything, but yeah. it's one of those things where I'm like, you know what? If uh, it's sort of like you know, lots of people Flames fans, yeah. They're like Flames fans are the worst, so we hate we hate Calgary Flames or whatever. They probably hate them for different reasons. Yeah. But the fans like ruin it for other people. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Honestly, it feels a little bit like that's that kind of how it is for you. Eh? <laughs> yeah. That's interesting. Well, because coming from Manitoba too, like especially like even ten years ago, that was the big thing was football, right? Mm. And uh, you'd get associated with that just instantly coming over here, right? Yeah, big time. So yep. it's one of those rivalries you're born into, in my opinion. And yeah. Like, or, or if you spend significant time in one of the places, you'll probably root for that place, right? What were those families so. in Romeo? and juliet what were they called again i'm not gonna know the answer to this one i was terrible with shakespeare those two so. families montagues and capulets thank you, you ashley yeah they're always funny it's like it's like manitoba <laughs> and uh saskatchewan the montagues and capulets they're yeah you know they're rivals and it's good that it's good to be rivals but keep it peaceful there was there was actually some videos of fights in the stands and stuff and uh that's the kind of stuff i don't want to see because it's the sort of stuff i do want to be a see. friendly <laughs> it's supposed <laughs> to be a friendly <laughs> rivalry not fist of cups right <laughs> so anyways welcome to unedited uh it's been a good uh la hope your labor day long weekend was good what did you do tell us about it Maybe you had more fun than maybe you knew it was a Labor Day mm. long weekend, unlike Ethan. Yeah, so. maybe you got your fight on. Yeah, you know? so check it out. Yeah, if you were in the stands, then 
then I hope you're okay. Imagine so, somebody listening or watching yeah. was in a fight in the game. Yeah. Please tell us. Please tell reach us, out. Tell us Send this it. to somebody that you know that was at the game <laughs> so they can try to identify somebody. We want feedback from someone who fought somebody in the actual game. There you go. That's right. Right? Sure. <laughs> oh, man. I'm not awesome. sure. But, uh, but let, so us, good. let us know if you have any association with that. Otherwise, we're moving into In My Feed today. We're going to talk about the neighborhood, and we're also going to figure out what people were thinking and how about you. But nice. let's just jump right in. In My Feed. In My Feed. Mm-mm-mm. So do you want me to go first, or do you want to go first on this one? You know, it's up to you. I, okay. m- me and Jordan don't talk about our feed items intentionally so that we can surprise each other. Maybe sometimes yeah. we, we might bring it up in a casual conversation. That's right. But we try not to. Yeah. And so I'm really curious if we have the same one because so of I, some things you said. Because I said local. Yes. Yeah. And that it's divisive. So who's going first? You go first. I'll go first. Okay. Uh, this is a headline from yesterday, but it's a broader headline that's been going on all summer. Mm. Regina school divisions hopeful. Not the same. As year <laughs> as year starts with cell phone ban. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So Saskatchewan schools have made the decision to ban cell phones, yep. right? Yeah. Um, and uh, it's if you listen to like a show like Evan Bray, which is like a big talk show host in, in Saskatchewan, mm-hmm. on uh, I think they're on uh, I forget six fifty CKOM is the station. Um, mm. That's, it's those been are he's been talking about this now for weeks, and 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 people are quite like passionate on both sides of this debate, right? Mm-hmm. Um, do you have an initial thought? Do you, do you think phones should be banned in schools? Like, what are the pros? What are the cons for you? Do you I have actually, to weigh this issue? Yes. Well, okay, so I work with teenagers. Um, and yes. I also know quite a few teachers. And this weekend, actually, I heard a teacher, overheard them talking about it when I was at this birthday party with them and stuff. And anyway, I just think it's really interesting. I think okay. it's, uh, it's a situation where we probably have a net gain opportunity. Yeah. But there, it doesn't mean that there's not going to be struggles and downsides to it. Agreed. Uh, and and one, one thing that occurs to me is that when we run youth group and stuff, we teach our youth leaders, uh, don't try to get their your kids off of their phones too much. Like we can encourage that there's certain times where we say, okay, we're going to have a small group discussion or we're going to listen to this person talk or we're playing this game. Why don't you guys just put your phones down for a bit? But we we don't like take away phones or anything. Yeah. First of all, people opt in to come to a church youth group. So like taking items from them is kind of crazy. <laughs> it feels a little bit yeah, invasive. Yeah. We don't actually have any authority to do that sort of thing. But also just because the reality is, is that for lots of young people, phones are coping mechanisms. Yes. And we don't want to just kick that crutch out from under them. So the difference yeah. is we're a social religious group so we have like a different set of priorities but i recognize that it could be difficult for some students to be you know loosened from what they might use as something that helps them deal with anxiety and stress throughout the day or feel centered or grounded or help them to feel connected to you know different lines of security that makes sense uh, and even things they're not aware of people compulsory checking checking things on their phones that's like a coping mechanism oh for sure it is for sure so they might not even know that it's an issue until they have Behavior, behavioral responses in the classroom. Yeah. So you know what I mean? Like, it's going to be interesting. I think it's probably yeah. net gain for education if we're able to keep phones out, keep kids yeah. less distracted. But I, I think it's going to be pretty complicated to figure I, out. I, I think so, too. I think complicated is the right word. I think it's complex. I think that there is gain to an extent of uh, obviously keeping students' attention more on the task at hand yeah. in classrooms. And I think maybe that was the original goal and purpose of removing them to begin with. I agree 100% with what you're saying, though, as far as, uh, you know, like it, it, there's a book out there right now. Uh, I just picked it up this summer called The Anxious Generation. I'm forgetting who the author was. Yep. But it talks all about this and all about like screen time and, and why we go to our screens and why our screens, like you said, is like it's almost like a crutch that you could sometimes turn to mm-hmm. um, when you're feeling a bit yippy and stuff. Like, you know, it just it just helps you be able to, uh, you know, focus on something different. And, mm-hmm. I, and, I, and I think we're going to see trouble with that. I, I think the, one of the biggest things that I was frustrated with is that it, it might also create a new thing for teachers where they have to play like the like the the rule maker on without without a whole lot of uh, a policy put in place. Mm. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. I heard that from a couple of my friends who are teachers, actually, is that they just feel like now they're going to have to play like 
it, it sets up another interesting dynamic between them and their students that maybe yeah. wasn't there before, right? It's going to make it harder to teach in some ways, right? Because exactly. That added dynamic. Yeah, and I get the whole, like, you know, get off of uh, Instagram. Like, fair enough, you're in school, right? Yeah. Makes sense. Like, you know, We I, should have an age of 18 anyways to be on Instagram, in my opinion. Well, but I, that's... <laughs> the, anxious, the anxious generation would agree with you, actually. That book I'm, I was talking about would, would, yeah. would agree wholeheartedly with that. Yeah. But I also think at the same time, though, it's complex because uh, sometimes your phones could probably help you with your, with your internet uh, connection. Mm-hmm. And in school, that could be valuable as far as looking around for research and ideas and stuff when you're completing projects. So, yeah. so it's going to be interesting. I I, I think someone mentioned to me yesterday that it's at the teacher's discretion with that. So, mm. so there will be some use, right, and whatnot. But uh, yeah, but uh, I don't know. It, when I first heard the the announcement, just to say, I thought, oh, that's probably good. Yeah. But but, but then you know, there's always a, a second side to everything, and then, yeah. and then starting to hear some of the teachers' opinions and hearing where they were coming from, and uh, hearing about students and and how this can affect them. Mm-hmm. There's there's a couple sides to weigh in here on, and so it's it's probably best not to just you know make a clear cut one and all kind yeah. of judgment, right? Yeah. And maybe recognize that it's a complex situation yeah. and uh, probably in some ways complicated. Well, so. I, exactly. And I think just because something's difficult doesn't mean it's not right, you know? Mm-hmm. Uh, I think that's... But it, it, like thinking about... So there's a, there was a while where I was putting together a lot of uh, research to like do these seminars to train parents on how they should help their kids interact with social media. Mm-hmm. And um, when I was going through this material, it was a lot of correlation without necessarily there being causation of like um, significant like memory um, dampening and stuff with social media use and like instant gratification and like the, the dopamine responses to your phone, which like dopamine is like a motivator. And so if you have it disproportionately or inappropriately allocated it can seriously affect your drive to get certain things done and Mm -hmm. anyway like going through all of that and over the years this was maybe like four years ago that i did a bunch of this over the years the correlation has really started to lean into causation where Mm -hmm. people are really confident that well there are people who are getting more confident that it's not just a correlation but there's actually a cause and effect taking place where social media and phones and you know, constant alerts and reminders, and is seriously affecting people's development. Huge. It yeah. makes me think, though, yeah. um, for you, how do you feel? Your kids are at an age where yeah. they don't have phones or anything yet. Mm-hmm. Uh, how do you feel thinking that they could go up into a public school system and not have to deal with phones being out in class and stuff? Like, d- does that make you feel good? Does that make you think like, well, are they missing out on potential opportunities or? Like, what do you think? No, I think good. I think good. After reading this book, The Anxious Generation, I think yeah. my sympathy towards, you know, social media and phones at that age is starting to dwindle a little bit Yeah, because <laughs> I'm starting to see the the very real uh, opposite side of things that, mm-hmm. that, that can come with all this stuff. Mm-hmm. And so I, I think I think I appreciate it to an extent, but it is complex. And I have to I have to state that strongly because like if me and you were to pull our phones away today, just in our office day mm-hmm. for, for six hours away from each other, like, and we weren't allowed to use it. Like, I, I think that would affect me a little bit. Do you know what I mean? Because mm-hmm. like I, I sometimes just checking my phone gives me a, a little break in my mind kind of thing from, yep. from the task at hand. Right. It's like a little escape sometimes. And, uh, sure. And like it or not, I think we all kind of are, we, we have some sort of, uh, some sort of like habit with this, like just to, just to check the news, check the sports, check out what's happening in music today, something yeah. like that. Right. Yeah. Um, I remember when, uh, Nick and I used to vacation with close friends. Mm-hmm. One of the things that we would do, and this is now like, we're talking 10 years ago now, but one of the things that we would do at the restaurant is everyone would put their cell phone in the middle and turn it upside down like this mm-hmm. face down. And the first person to grab their phone paid the bill. <laughs> Classic. And uh, but but like it was yeah. something it was something we tried right and uh, yeah. I don't think any of us ever had to pay it and uh, <laughs> but 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 it was it was tempting I I remember reaching for it and, and back then like my phone didn't have as much I guess you could say hold on me like it probably does now kind of thing right because it's just like daily integrated now yeah even if you're not so. doing as much doom scrolling or whatever Absolutely. like there's a lot of work stuff that happens yeah. even on even looking there. for a feeds right like yeah, I need my phone yeah. to check this out so yeah. so it's interesting and I think that there's definitely a uh, a line there to be drawn but uh, it's yeah. sure, it's sure causing a buzz in Saskatchewan because I think you know it's it's new for students it's new for teachers and uh, on mm-hmm. both sides of the of the of the issue you're gonna have 
strong opinions. Mm-hmm. And uh, an old teacher used to always tell me the truth is often in attention somewhere, right? Yeah. So <laughs> yeah, that's maybe, maybe that's where we need to look. What, what was in your feed? I'm interested to hear now where you're coming from, because uh, we thought we might be on the same page here. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. Well, let me just say about your thing real quick. I yeah. think it's a worthy pursuit. Whatever happens, I think it's good we're doing it. Yes. Let's figure it out. Let's, yeah. let's go for it. Absolutely. So, I'm in. But mine is also local. Okay. But local specifically to Saskatoon. Mm-hmm. And uh, the reason I thought that we might have the same item is because you said yours might be a little bit complicated or ha- have some divisive, yeah. you know. Um, but mine is really just talking about the downtown space in Saskatoon. Oh, yeah. And so I don't know if listeners and watchers or you have heard mm-hmm. about these conversations about something being put down into the, downtown Saskatoon. The arena the arena yeah (laughs) so it's been an interesting interesting conversation yeah there's a lot of uh people who care about local matters on either side of it um different perspectives people saying the last thing we needed is is an arena this is going to be bad for congestion and traffic and why does it have to be here and what are we getting rid of to put it here and there's other people saying the arena is going to help us have you know more of a like people are going to come downtown people are going to be interested to stay in our hotels and there's going to be more reason for people to, you know, we can have more shows and whatever. Um, but it's interesting because this is really, I don't have anything to bring to the table except for this article that I ran across, which says, and I'm not even going to get to the details of the article. I just want to hear your thoughts on this. Saskatoon lays out proposed payment plan for new $1.22 billion downtown arena district. Yes. What do you think? It's a few dollars, eh? Yeah, that's <laughs> pretty wild, man. So, so I, I I saw the proposal, I saw the drawings, I saw the pic, the, the fake pictures they had of the of the district. The renders, yeah. First thing I'll say is it looks beautiful. If, yeah. if you could actually pull something like that off and make it look even seventy five percent as good as they have it looking in the pictures, it, it'd be a beautiful sight for the downtown. Um, I do think that there is some. So here's the thing. I've, I've been listening to like I, I listen to talk radio often, and I've heard conversations on both sides here, mm. right? And I, I must state that I'm not a taxpayer in the city. And so that makes a big difference, though. He lives because, in the city. Just because, to be clear, he just doesn't pay taxes. Yeah, no, that's not true. I don't <laughs> live in the city. But that's an important distinction because if I was a taxpayer, I'd probably have a different opinion. Okay. Because taxes are definitely going to be affected. Well, everything's going to be taxes are already crazy affected in the city because I keep up with the news, and I, I, I believe at one point this year we're supposed to see a thirteen percent hike which got talked down to like seven or eight, which is still intense, right? Mm. And so I, I can understand the trepidation that people are having as far as, well, who's going to pay for this? Um, what's this going to look like? I do think it will bring economic uh, things to the downtown area for sure. Mm. But at the same time, like, so I, I, what I, Sask Place, like Sask Tell Center yep. is out in the middle of nowhere. Out by Costco down there, right? It's a little bit outside. And it of town. used to be the middle of nowhere when it was built. Like, yeah. like literally, that was a joke in Manitoba. We used to be like, "Here, been in that Saskatoon arena? It's literally in the middle of nowhere. This yeah, yeah. big rink, and there was at the time there was nothing around it. Yeah, like there's, I don't even know that, that Husky was probably there, but like you know, yeah, it was just pretty quiet there. There was no Tim's, there was no hotels, there was, there was none of that mm. stuff, right? Yeah. And uh, I, I, I think what some callers into these uh, talk shows I've been hearing are saying is that it should have always been downtown to begin with. Mm. You might have solved yourself an issue just by originally putting it down there. Yeah. Now, me personally, living from outside of the city, I kind of like having it where it is right now because it's a little bit more central for me, right? Sure. At the same time, though, um, I do think that, you know, downtown, th- there's a place for it. I think in Winnipeg, their arena is right smack downtown. Mm-hmm. They've arranged parking. They've made it work. It seems to happen. And uh, I don't know. There is a benefit to having something down there. Do we need to spend, the, the, does the city need to spend this kind of money right now for this project? That's the big one that I'm not going to weigh my opinion on, right? Mm-hmm. Um, what I have noticed, if I could rant for a second, is that no matter what, Go for it, let loose. no matter what happens, is Saskatoon's getting skipped for so much stuff anyways, right? Yeah. So I look at concert listings and every time I, I look, it's Edmonton, Winnipeg or Calgary, Winnipeg. Do you know Sometimes what I mean? Sometimes Regina, maybe. The odd time, but 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 even still, I find that this province gets flown over, and I think that's the idea that the mayor has said a couple times that we want to be a a non skip province. Yeah. And if we had a good facility, brand new, with with more seats and stuff, maybe we'd attract bigger acts into our downtown. Um, in the feed here, uh, producer Ashley just wrote the Ottawa Arena isn't downtown, only their football field is. So so I guess you know 
arenas can be held in different spots. There's some NFL stadiums that are held outside of the city on purpose, right? For the sake of parking. Yeah. So. Well, I'm the type of person who I would. So living in Winnipeg or living outside of Winnipeg, going into Winnipeg, Mm -hmm. game day, just avoid the area. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, You know, like for for the bombers and stuff or. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Like even, even with the way that downtown is with Midtown mall and stuff, yeah. like I already avoid the area. Like I just try our, not to our, be down there. Our downtown admittedly has gotten kind of tough in yeah. the last few well, years, right? Uh, not even because of toughness. I yeah. just mean because of congestion. Okay. Like I don't want to so be sitting like around in my car. I don't want to be fighting for a parking spot. I don't okay. want to be paying for parking. Okay. I'll park like far away and walk in if I have to. Like I'm just not... I just don't care about that. Like, I'm not trying to... It's not enjoyable for me to... There's even movie theaters elsewhere. Like, you know, the downtown theater used to be the big, big hitter. And now we've got landmark cinemas in Brighton just out kind of on the edge of town. Yeah, landmark just cleaned up. eh? Yeah, and Center (laughs) Center Mall uh, Cineplex has been insane as well since they rebuilt that huge building. I heard heard a rumor. I don't know if there's any truth to this, but I heard that uh, once the Cineplex downtown's lease expires... Mm -hmm. They may want a piece out of that location, right? It's interesting. Yeah, because I, I apparently could see these other two are doing so well. I could see why. Yeah. So that's the thing as well, is that for me, so when I lived in Stonebridge in the south end of the city, we always went to Center Mall for everything because there's ample parking. It's mm-hmm. not crazy busy. There's lots of exits from all the parking. Mm-hmm. There's lights to get out of there. Like there's yeah. it, like literally everything just works there. It's way more spread out. So it's not as congested of a mall. You go under the street to get to the other half, you know, and yeah. it had the theater there. It had. So anyway, the reason I say all that is like my priority just from a personal level will always be. So if they put an arena downtown, like maybe I'll go there to see something yeah. or whatever, yeah. but like, I'm just going to avoid it, which is fine. Yeah. <laughs> and so it's like, to, to me, if, if the net gain is to have a, or it's, I don't know if net gain is the right term here, but you know, if the bigger picture is that we have like a boost in our economics and yeah, you know, or whatever, our economy and then maybe, I don't know. That, Do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, like, that, I'm like, that, that I don't really care I what get. happens. That part I get. And I like the idea of it because it's always good when your city's yeah. doing a little economically better, right? Yeah. So nothing against that whatsoever. Producer Ashley just re- weighed in by saying congestion would get crazy after events. And, and that's true. Um, the, Dude, the, the, even the, the Sask, the, the, what's that place called outside of town you were talking about just a minute ago? Yeah, Sastel Center, whatever. Sastel yeah, Center. Even when their names. concert is out or something, it's yeah. like you, you can't get anywhere around it. It's and nuts. it's out in the middle yeah. of nowhere. Yeah. 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 When those Blades games were selling out last year when uh, uh, Connor Bedard was playing, uh, an hour to leave that area kind of thing. Like it was it was nuts how long you waited, right? Yeah. Because it went with 16,000 yeah. people in there. Being in the middle of nowhere, it's tough to get out of there. Imagine being in a cramped downtown. And and Saskatoon downtown, I'll say, is a little different than Winnipeg's because Winnipeg has a better system in the sense that there's so many one-way streets, which normally I don't like. But for leaving events, it's way better. It's more efficient because you don't traffic, have to worry yeah. about traffic going both ways, and all yeah. of them are at least four four lanes long. Yeah. So there's a lot of space for people to get out. Because going to Jets games, I used to park underground at the library, yeah. and uh, I found getting out of there not terrible. Some if if you left late, yes, you're in trouble. Yeah. But if you if you rushed to your vehicle a little bit, jumped in there, got going, you could normally you know get out of that area in about ten minutes or so. Yeah. yeah. I, I had had times where I waited half hour, forty five, because I left late, right? Yeah. So so I don't know. I don't know. It's 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 interesting um it'll be interesting to see how this plays out for the city i i do think that there's an exciting factor to getting a new arena yeah and then the whole area around it i think looks exciting too but uh yeah it, 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 is the city ready for it i don't know maybe you have an opinion i have no idea but uh i'm sure some people have opinions it's it'd be interesting one. to hear them if you guys want to let us know Absolutely. there's got to be somebody listening who's got uh, a heartbeat on this because again like I, just, I don't really i don't really care like yeah. I mean, <laughs> if it's good for the city then great you yeah. know and and if it's you know yeah. i'll just not be around like that's that's okay yeah. i don't need to be well and that's it around there all the time so and, and, and that's why um, i want to make it clear too that i didn't I, I i don't live inside the city to pay taxes because i think that brings a whole other argument in mm-hmm. and a whole other perspective from people who know that you know part of their their tax bill is going to be paying for all this right yeah yeah so maybe that makes it a stronger thing it is interesting to consider but uh new arena in saskatoon uh that issue isn't going away and you'll probably be hearing a lot about it if you keep up with local news yeah so good one good for bringing it up thank um, you yeah no hey, problem Jordan. no problem i appreciate that man yeah, i'm here for you eh? i thought yours was good too oh thank you yes uh, yeah good conversation to be had it is a good one good local one today should i share another one with you so 
next week. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> not going to do it today. <laughs> so we're going to head into our next uh, segment here. Why don't we talk about what's happening in the neighborhood? In the neighborhood. So we're kicking off. We're into fall. Yeah. So do you like fall? Oh, man, I love fall. Is that your I, favorite season? Uh, well, mm, I don't know. Mm. When it's fall time, it's my favorite <laughs> season. I can say that confidently. Is it? Yes. Okay. So, But every season is my favorite season when it turns over. Okay. So are we in fall right now or are we in summer in your mind? I'm not We're, saying officially. I'm saying in your mind. Yeah. So like in my mind, that's fluid. So I think right now by the weather... We're still in summer. Yes, I feel the same way. But my mind has always been late August, early September, fall. Okay. That's so how my brain I, works. My, my car helps me in these situations. My car has four different colors for the audio display. Okay. So every, um, so basically, Fancy car. I'll, I'll start in March, okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll start in March. March 1st, it goes to a certain purple, like a, a, a violet. Okay. And then once we hit summer in June, I turn to like a, a nice blue because that, that gives me like a nice kind of summer vibe. Okay. On September 1st, two days ago, I switched it to orange. Uh, so we're in orange now. Okay. And that's going to take us up to November 11th until I turn it to red. Wow. And it's going to go for Christmas all the way to Saint, to Valentine's Day until probably the end of March. I'll, I'll switch it over to the other color. Wow. For spring. So I, I, I coordinate it by these things. And so, yes, I agree with you. I, I, I feel like we're in summer right now because it's going to be 30 for the next week or so. But my mindset feels like we're in fall time because September is always associated that way. That's so cool of you, man. Like, <laughs> you're such a based guy sometimes, you know? You're just like, yeah, I set these lights to like, I love that. And even your yeah. your backgrounds on your, your computer and your phone and stuff are always like seasonal. You just I just my, love that, see dude. see my fair background this year? Yeah. With the big fair wheel? Just, that's how I was like, oh, it's really summer. Jordan's got a new background with like a summer fair on it, the background. Yeah, and I, I was actually today looking up fall backgrounds. To see what oh, I can yeah. put up there, yeah. yeah, yeah. My favorite are the Christmas ones because uh, those ones look the warmest. Oh yeah, yeah. We just go ham on those Christmas ones. Oh, I love those things. Yeah, yeah. 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 But uh, but yeah, the the, the 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 fall to me is a good season. Um, Producer Ashley says it's summer until September twenty first. Embrace it. Um, I agree. <laughs> I agree. I, I I do agree because I do think that we don't get enough summer around this place that we need to hold on to it as long as we can. Okay. But at the same time, something switches for me after Labor Day. Yep. And I just feel like we're in a new season, even though technically we're still in the summer season. Yeah, so the technicalities of summer... So, like, I I, I accept what Ashley's saying about the 21st of 100%. September. But I have a September 10th birthday, mm -hmm. and I've always identified as having a fall birthday. Because yeah. when I was a kid, it would be fallish. Yeah. Like, there would be leaves turning and stuff, and, like... Yeah days are way shorter and yeah. so you know like i guess i there's a difference between what's supposed to happen what does happen and then what you feel there's like yes. three different realms of seasons you know yeah but one of the reasons i really like fall time is like in church and stuff and with school and with uh even community stuff happening like there's a lot of stuff that like kicks off in the fall right yes and I enjoy like the activities and the uh, you know people gathering hay bales and pumpkins for decorations or whatever you know and yeah. just like all the uh, it's all warm and it's all community and it just makes me think of when yeah. I was a kid how everything seems so much more simple in the fall where like when community was together everybody was just happy and it's fall time and. Yeah. Let's just be cozy together. Like, and, so I really love fall for those reasons. And we're in routines, right? Like, routines are all back now for yeah. the most part. Yeah. Like, if, if, you, if you drove yesterday morning, you would have saw a huge difference in the traffic than you did all summer. Because it was all, so all of a smoky. Sudden it was just, well, that too, but it was <laughs> it was massively packed on the roads yesterday, right? It was, yeah. And, and uh, you didn't yeah. see that all summer because so many people are on vacation mode and different things. But, like, yeah. I, I have to admit, I was a bit sad when Z went back to school yesterday. I, you know, I was kind of yeah, thinking, yeah. like, you know, it's it's just it's, it's just it, it it signals a shift kind of thing, yeah, right? Yeah. And I, and I will miss summer because I I do love summer. I love the weather, but uh, fall things. Let's talk a couple favorite fall things. We do have kickoff at the church happening this weekend, so make sure to check that out. We're gonna have bouncy castles, barbecue, uh, shaved ice, other cool things. So yeah. invite a friend, the neighborhood church, uh, two through three Pine House Drive. Check us out. Um, I believe our location in Warman is meeting at the Lions Park. That, That's right, that Lions Park. At four, right? You betcha, for a little, yeah. A little fun for that day. So check that out. But a few things I like about fall, um, I like pumpkin flavor. Yeah? I do. Like pumpkin spice stuff? I do, yes, yes. Huh. 
Um, huh. I do. I, I definitely do. N- huh. Nicole, Nicole ordered one of those pumpkin <laughs> cold cream brews the other day yeah, yeah. from Starbucks. Yeah. And uh, I, I took the first sip and I was like, man, that's such a good flavor for Interesting, me. Interesting. Yeah. So I, I got made fun of for liking that stuff a few years back. There was like well, a, you there should was like, be made There was like a revolt no, against just, it, right? So P- Yeah, people randomly, okay, that's very true. Yeah. Because I'm just joking about like, teasing about I, this. Yeah. Like all of a sudden people were like, oh, we've never loved pumpkin spice. Yeah. It's like, you hypocrites. You guys were chugging this stuff like it was milk you know know. like i know and i i I don't mind pumpkin spice i prefer like christmas time seasonal beverages more yeah i I was shamed for this a couple times but like younger adults kind of thing who i took for coffee yeah we'd go there and i'd order the pumpkin spice latte and i'd say like do you you like pumpkin spice and i'd almost get like a snobby like no no why would i like that that. i wouldn't touch that right it's so flavorful it's It's tasty it's the advent of the internet turning against it because you could see online people teasing psls psl white girl exactly it was like such a thing and so it's like if anybody but i mean part of that's also just fun if i can just like really dramatically switch here i'm gonna do a complete one i know it is fun part of it's fun where it's just like yeah we're all like we're, we're all on the internet we all get these allusions to these different sort of like you know cultural moments and stuff so it's kind of fun but but, yeah, producer yeah. Ashley's weighing in. I've never liked pumpkin spice. Chai is better. Agreed. The flavor is just nasty. Y'all are basic. <laughs> Classic, basic. There so, you go. So I like chai. The pump- chai is great. Chai is chai. better, I would think, because I chai is one of my favorites. Do you like, call it chai tea? Yeah, chai tea. It's funny because like you've heard, this is another internet thing yeah. where people are opening eyes of English speaking white people that call it chai tea. That just means tea tea, apparently. Because chai it? means tea. Okay. So it's like okay. tea tea. The only the only way I've Which ever I, I, I ever hey, remember like, having chai I, is in tea. I'm but just just to cl- I need to put a little <laughs> thing on here. I don't know if that's true. That's just what okay. I've seen on the internet. Okay. So uh but uh, Ashley thinks it's true. So yeah. you know. Yeah. But chai chai, chai is, is good. good. I like it as a fall flavor. I like pumpkin too. I think it's great. One year they tried doing like apple. I think that was like the last couple of years, uh Starbucks who influences a lot of this stuff because they're a popular, you know, coffee drink place. Yeah, less popular um, than ever, though. But I anyway, agree. we can I get agree. into that later, maybe. But, but uh, they brought Apple drinks, and I didn't like... Uh, apple was just too much for apple. me. I wasn't there. I find Apple maybe more of a winter thing. Apple's good so, with tea. It's good summers, too. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah. you know what I had this summer? What's I that? had a candy apple ice cream. I can't believe we didn't talk about Would that. Would that have been awesome? Did we talk about that when we talked about ice cream? No, but that sounds good, though. So good, dude. Was because it good? It, there's like caramel <laughs> swirls in it kind of thing, but it was like candy, caramel, like interest, like what you'd have on a candy apple. Yeah. And then the ice cream tasted like green apple. It was so good, dude. That's cool. I like it. Anyway, sorry, but... Yeah. Yeah, ap- apple makes more sense for teas, not so much for, for coffee. Switch, sw- switching gears into favorite fall things, do you like weather? Fall weather? Oh, dude. Yeah. I do when it really gets to fall weather. I love October. Uh-huh. Uh, in about two weeks, you're going to dress for winter in the morning. Mm-hmm. You're going to get to fall by about 10 a.m. You'll be flo- full-blown summer at 2. And then by about 4, 5, or 6, you'll be back to fall kind of thing. I get what you mean. And, and that part drives me like crazy. That. No, you, I don't. You want to dress once because, for the day. Well, that's the thing. You don't I, put I, on I, a jacket, take it off or anything? I, I do. Yeah. I do. Okay. I do. I do. But but like, I, I, I love sweater weather. So I, I can't wait to get there. Yeah. I guess I could say. That's and another thing that has been torn away. apart by the internet sweater weather. The fact that you mention <laughs> it, you know, so might get called basic for this, but I agree. Sweater weather is amazing. I love sweater weather. I literally said that Everyone to my will wife. say layer, which I get, right? Like I yeah. understand that, yeah. that concept. And I like layers, but, but sweater yeah. weather, there's just something cozy about putting that on and you're, you're in that for the day. This is the thing. It's referring to exactly what you're talking about and talking about changing season and stuff. And like fall is my favorite season when fall is starting because mm-hmm. it's time for change. I yes. want there to be a season change yeah. and I really lean into the season. So I love winter when winter starts. Ask me in late February how much I love winter. Sometimes I'm like, I'm ready for it to be done. You know? Yeah. I, I mean, even for summer. Yeah. Honestly, the yeah. tail end of August. I was kind of like enough heat, you know. Like, I, and I, some well, people are going to crucify me. Well, for you that, pr- you prep yourself, buddy, because I I saw like next so next weekend we're talking like four or five days in the thirties coming up, which is crazy at this yeah. time of year, right? So, it's nice though because I can still also I can hail Mary some bike rides. I can get yes. some some last minute rides in yeah. there in September or play some tennis or whatever. Yeah. But uh, yeah, yeah, I I genuinely said the phrase to my wife. I'm ready for sweater, swe- sweater weather, <laughs> sweater weather. And yeah. uh, I was like, wait, isn't that a thing? And I kind of felt silly for saying it yeah. like genuinely in a moment and thinking it was my own thing that I just thought of. But Yeah, sweater weather's awesome. I, I, I like it. I can't wait for it. F- fall's good, though, weather-wise, too, for walking and stuff. I'm looking forward to that. The summers have been a little interesting trying to get like 
an hour walk in when it's 30 something outside it's not not really the funnest per se unless you love the heat i guess but uh yeah for me that's not, not the best football starts in fall nfl football can't wait for that that keeps yeah. me occupied uh my birthday's in the fall in october so looking forward to that oh um thanksgiving you know i mm-hmm. eat turkey at thanksgiving so do you see how that goes right do you like turkey or ham more you know what i like turkey i think wow but, but it's gotten closer over the years but you need cranberry sauce on it right I do like cranberry sauce, yes, but 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 ham has Just gotten more moist. ham's kind of like before turkey was over here and ham was way down there. Yeah, now now it's getting closer in my you opinion. Know, it's really interesting because ham so, is my favorite like roast meat, you know, like yeah. over turkey and stuff like that. But it's also like the meat that I have the biggest issue of conscience with okay. where I'm like, yeah. should I eat pork? Well, what is this? <laughs> yeah. Well, well I'm so. like, I don't know. You, uh, anyway, we don't need to get into, uh, you know, agriculture and stuff. But, <laughs> there you go. Or it's not, it's not agriculture, livestock, whatever you and, get what I mean. But I, I definitely prefer a, a ham, but. Interesting. No, I like that. Just so you know, Jordan, could you mark I, that I, down? I'm going to give you the last word on this one. Anything else fall favorite thing that I missed? Yeah. I just have to say something else. I have to say, are you ready for it? I am. I'm looking forward to it. I have to. Okay. Like, you can't convince me not to. Please do it. Okay. Only under compulsion, though. Okay. I have to say. Yeah. That genuinely, you mentioned church kickoff. Yes. Church kickoff is a wonderful demarcation for me for the beginning of new things. Yeah. And I love it that when we get together at church whatever church you go to or the neighborhood church we always try to do something at kickoff Mm -hmm. i love the energy where people are here people are coming to church maybe they've been away for the summer you didn't see them or whatever they've been busy and you're back and everybody's talking about school Mm -hmm. and everybody's talking about what's your plans for the fall what are you doing and we get to eat some food together and just that that is like so unique to fall as well like i love our kickoff weekends because they feel we come together well yeah it's like really community oriented and we do other community stuff throughout the year yeah but fall time is just a time when you're wanting to reconnect with people i agree you're getting back into things so i have to say that honestly this weekend yeah yeah, I'm just really looking forward to it and seeing some people and having some friendly conversations about what's going on in their lives. Me too. So come on out to the neighborhood church and join us for that. And I mean that honestly. Okay, that wasn't a commercial, no, but that kind of sounded I, I, like I, it. I, I want that in there, though. I, I want yeah. you to join us for that because I do agree with you. I think, and, and if anything, I think the fall feels like a start of a new year to me. Like mm-hmm. January does not feel like a start of a new exactly. year. Exactly. That's all, right. Whatsoever. That's right. right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's sort of like, so, well, we had Christmas. Now we're restarting some stuff. Exactly. But it's not like a new year. No. No, I always feel like September. That's when it kicks yes. off and that's when we get going. We so, should petition to change the new year. We to should. September. We should. I'll let you start on it, okay? okay. You do, shake you do, on you do, it? You do the paperwork, and then I'll support you, okay? I do the paperwork? I'll be your co-signer. It's never yeah. happening then, Sound I guess. Good. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's head into our last segment. Let's talk about how about you? How about you? Mm-hmm. So a couple things we talked about today we're going to start with is just cell phones. Do you have an opinion on that? A new arena, Saskatoon, do you live here? What do you think? Mm-hmm. Fall, what's your favorite stuff? Are you like Ethan and Are you pumpkin basic? spice is like your life? Are you, whoa. If, if, if that's the case, let sure. us know, okay? Tell us I'll in the comments, it. all right? Yeah. <laughs> so. Let me know if you're basic like me. Let's <laughs> see. Go. Yeah, exactly. But so I was looking at our comments from the last episode and you started a bit of a stir. I did? Yeah, you did. What do you mean I did? So you did. You, you, you attacked a beverage, and uh, a listener took, no, took, took notice of this. And I'm going to read a comment, okay? Oh, Zevia. I, I'm going to read a comment. Wait, I'm about to go to war with you over Zevia. Whoa. And that's addressed to Ethan, because I didn't comment on the issue, okay? So I'm just okay. reading like that's written towards you. Zero sugar, still fun, fizzy, but not like drinking angry water. Is this all one comment? Yeah, the hate is unfounded. Also, a great soda option for... For people who can't have a lot of sugar, like children, diabetics, neither of which I am, but stand with both communities, I could go on. So we talked about the flavor last week. I have to drink one. Do you want to drink one? Well, yeah, I do. I really do. Thank you, Ashley. Okay, let's talk about this in a second. But can I just say really quick, I'm not saying don't have stevia drinks. I'm not saying don't have aspartame. We actually yes. only drink jo- diet pops in our house yeah. or, or yeah. zero sugars yeah. or yeah. whatever. Yeah, and I, so I, 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 knew that, I knew that wasn't your uh, your objection whatsoever. For you, it was the flavor of this yes. particular drink. But right? I will say this here, I'm holding up a can of Zevia, yeah. is disgusting. Is so it? whether it's good for you or not, 
It's nasty. We're gonna try it. Well, I've never tried it. It's so. gonna be if if you're listening. Oh, that was crisp. I like that sound. Eh? <laughs> it just sounds good. Eh? Okay, if you're listening, you're just gonna be hearing us doing a little bit of a right. splish splash in here. Get a little bubbly at the top Shut there. Whoa, Ooh, whoa, look whoa, at this. Whoa, look whoa. at this. <laughs> oh, that was very just top. about got you. Okay. Are you ready to do this? Yeah, I'm just gonna. Oh, don't drink. You gotta cheers me first. I don't want it. Yeah, I also don't want to just have a whole mouthful of foam because that's probably gonna hamper the experience Good. here. So. Does blowing on bubbles put them down? It might. I don't. I have no idea. <laughs> what if I just stick my finger in there? There you ah, go. That's kind there of you gross. go. There you go. All right. Cheers, me. <laughs> you really ready for this? I'm eh? ready okay. to go. Yeah. So this is cherry black cherry black zevia. Cherry zevia. First time trying zevia. Dink. Let's see what this is like. Okay. Holy smokes! That's not what I expected. <laughs> I was expecting like bubbly or something like that. Do you know what I mean? Hmm. Okay, that's interesting because oh, man. Cause, cause I, I, I really want to defend the person who left the comment on our on our on our on our wall. Yeah. That's a different one though. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like it, do you? It's okay. I don't know. No, it's not really my thing. I, I feel like it's too sweet. Like I know there's no yeah. sugar in it, but the sweetness flavor is, is 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 pretty intense, eh? You know what? I'm having a weird moment because I don't know what flavor it was I drank the other day. Me and one of our interns, uh, Nathan, had Zevia, and we both were just like spitting it out. It was so bad. Like it was okay. just such a nasty flavor. Okay. But this is really sweet. Yes. And I'm wondering if like I haven't like I didn't eat breakfast or anything. I've just been drinking water this morning. Yeah. Is it just because my palate's like completely untinged right now? Could be. After a few sips, it tastes a little bit better. I'll give it that. But it's still, and that's what you want it, from it, a beverage. It still has a strong. <laughs> it still has a strong uh, uh, fake sugar taste. Yeah, you could taste it really hard at the end. Very artificial. One. Yeah, like I if mean, drink, even if, if it's drink natural, steel or but... something, like you don't even know you're really drinking stevia. <laughs> oh, but this, steel. this, you know that you're drinking stevia, right? Or whatever's in here. Part of the comment that the that the person left to was said, I used to not like apples until I ate a few. I also used to hate wearing socks. L love involves practice. Do you think you could love, love this? Love involves practice. Do you think practice. you could love this? <laughs> if you practice drinking this more, Ethan, could you love this drink? <laughs> That's just crazy. That's so crazy to go that hard yeah. on, on a carbonated beverage. Yeah. But I, I agree. First of all, love involves practice, period. Yeah. But... Uh, I don't understand disliking apples. I liked them the first time I ate them. Yeah. I, I don't understand disliking wearing socks. I loved wearing them since I was a kid. But, well, I mean, my mom could probably tell you stories about me fighting socks or something before my memories kicked in. But mm -hmm. I, the thing is, I didn't like coffee when I started drinking it. Nope, the only I. reason I, I, I acquired the taste... That's a great taste, example. But the reason I acquired the taste was cultural. Yeah, and the men in my family, particularly in my Finnish side of the family, coffee was so important to them yeah. that I wanted to do that, and yeah. so I did it. And now I like coffee for my own reasons, but I yeah. I also like it the way I like it without having so to do are, it. The are way you telling me do. that with with black cherry zevia, if you if you just keep drinking it, you're gonna fall in love eventually? No, it's different. <laughs> it's it's different because so I. I get the comment. I get yeah. what this commenter is saying, and I, I get understand. It too. I get it too. But I just think, like, I wouldn't do coffee like that again if I was an adult. Like, okay. I wouldn't. I'll try new things, and if it's different to me, but I could like it, then I'll like it. But, like, as an adult, I don't force myself to th like things that I don't enjoy on the surface. You know Sounds what I mean? Sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah. We're going to try another one here. Producer okay. Ashley got All us right. more, more, more uh, Zevia here. Okay. And this is a zero sugar energy drink, mango ginger. This is loaded, energy. loaded with caffeine. I know how me and you both how much feel caffeine, about caffeine is in there. Lots. Well, so, let me, can I read it? I'll tell you right now. Okay. 120 milligrams per 355. So. And how so, is big is the can? So this is half a grande Starbucks coffee worth of caffeine. In that little can. In this little can, yeah. I mean, it's a pretty yeah. tall can, but it's a little can. Yeah. So I'm only gonna take a little bit because I I realize that flip your tilt your cup a bit. Because uh, you were pretty upset at those bubbles. Whoa, 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 so whoa, whoa, whoa. We're gonna try this one out. This is a mango ginger and uh, mango ginger. We are going to. Uh, it smells way better. Does it? You, do you smell it? I'm getting it right now. Dink. All right, let's try it. Oh wow, that's way better. I mess with that. That is way better, right? Mm. 
Yeah, I mess with that. Yeah, that's good. I like that one better. Wow. So add a little caffeine in your Zevia, and it's a game changer. Interesting. Is what we're learning here. So it's still got some of that bitter profile in the back of the carbonated water. Yeah. But it's like I like that there for this. Like I I, I don't like it there with it's this, more carbonated. This like crazy sweet black cherry stuff with the bitter note. You're just like, yeah. ooh, it was good, and then it got ruined. You this know has what I mean? some bite. That's what makes it better. I think. Like Barks the, has bite. Well, Barks does have bite. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So, <laughs> but this stuff though i find like it has like a taste in the end that 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 is a little bit more uh yeah it's it's, it's more satisfying than the other wow i like it better can i see those ingredients yeah, don't drink too much though does it have any we, of that we, we both stay off the caffeine that's a little true. bit that's eh? true so we're not we're not caffeine yeah, fiends here shaky here i have a coffee meeting at 4 30 i'm trying to decide if i'm gonna sewer my whole night by having a coffee or not are you you know what it's a big decision to make yeah, it so because if you if you have the coffee you might you might mess up the <laughs> sleep so, so you know I'm, in terms of an energy drink this doesn't have a lot of that extra junk that really is like people say like messes with you yeah it's yeah. just caffeine yeah 120 milligrams from what i can see so like a starbucks a starbucks okay. grande they say is about two to 250 so yeah that's the uh that's the difference. We're going to try one more drink here that producer Ashley was so great to get us. This one's yeah, called should, Orange clear my mouth. Cove Soda. It's a probiotic, and it's 1% for the planet, it says in the corner here. And I've never heard of this one. Let me see. Is there no, no caffeine in here as far as I can tell. It says Sans Sucre. Uh, what kind of... Uh, I speak uh, French, y'all. Oh, this one is Stevia as well. I, I always check the sweetener, right? This eh? one's Stevia as well? Yeah. Yeah. Which is interesting because for the longest time, it was aspartame was the was the OG. Yep. And then Splenda came along, which is just sucralose. Yep. So you see that in like Gatorade Zero and different drinks like that, which I have sitting over there. Yep. And Stevia is in all the newer ones I find, like BioSteel and, and uh, I think Prime uses Stevia. And obviously Zevia does use Stevia too, right? Prime is under fire right now, by so the way. It is under fire, I've yeah. heard, yeah. I got judged the other day for Sur- having one at, surprise, at church. Surprise, Someone walked yeah. up to me and said, you're drinking that? And I was like... Whoa. Was that person me? Whoa. No, no it wasn't you. <laughs> Actually, a couple people did it to me, and I'm like, wow. Yeah. So I did some research into it, and apparently the 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 grape flavor has been, uh, like specifically the grape flavor has been yeah. put under fire. Not so. to mention the proprietors have remained under fire their yes. entire careers. That's wait, wait, true. let's take a little mouthful, and mm-hmm. let's swish, okay? Clear our mouth. Yep, there you go. <laughs> There we go. Producer Clear the palate. Love there. that she the the Joanna <laughs> face was just incredible when when, Sorry, when just, Ethan did that. I just uh, needed to make sure my palate is all clear. All right, one more taste here. Cheers it up, and we'll try Orange Cove soda Bink and see what Cove we think. Cove soda oh. smells like Orangina. Interesting. That is interesting. Man, this is such quality listening experience here. Just us sipping and sighing and smacking. and I think it's my favorite. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe I just like orange. Maybe it's the flavor. Because there's something weird with it. Do you agree? Yeah. There's a weirdness now. It's almost aftertaste. getting away with it. Like, it's almost mm-hmm. just like, man, it's a gently sweetened orange beverage. Yeah. But uh, it, it's not quite getting away with it, is it? No. Not at all. So... I don't know if I have but to. But you pick, know what? If I have summer to, day, yeah, I'm taking the cove. I think so too. I think so. And th- this one probably all around tastes better. Yeah. But this one feels like you can crush this on a summer day, right? That's weird for yeah, sure. It'd be good. So why don't you weigh in on this? Why don't you let us know? Or have you tried Zevia? Are you a fan? Um, are you not a fan? Are you not a fan? <laughs> Would is, you like to curse their name? Is it something that you could appreciate after trying more? Maybe you haven't tried the Energy Zevia. Or maybe this uh, this uh, Orange Cove Soda maybe is going to be right up your alley. Uh, what are your favorite summer drinks? Uh, we're, we're past summer, so why don't you even throw us your favorite fall drinks? And uh, maybe we'll do some fall drink uh, samples here. That'd be fun. I think it'd be good. But yeah. i got to ask you something. Yes. Because as you were saying that, I read this thing in, okay. the, in the notes here. Okay. And it says that there's a comment on Facebook that says, this explains the winky face emoji text from Jordan. <laughs> what i have no idea what does that even mean i have no clue who who said that i don't know what it means and what explains that so it would have to be someone that i know and every now and then when i'm making a sarcastic point or something i'll throw a wink in okay so maybe you referenced that last week and it's like now it all makes sense could be lol <laughs> uh, lou 
Oh, Lou, Lou. Lou, who said okay. that. Okay, so I'm, oh. I'm, I'm just trying to pester him. That's yes. what I'm doing. Okay, <laughs> so what it was, was we were talking about sending wife texts to your boss. Yes. And so now he's saying, oh, this explains yes, yes, winky yes, yes, texts yes, yes. from you. Okay, yeah. so I'm yeah. glad that I brought that up because I really wanted to get to the bottom of that. And I would still choose the boss. In this You'd case. still send those winky faces would. to your boss. I would. In yeah. fact, you do yeah. it on purpose. You know, I... I I, yeah, I thought maybe what that comment was getting at is sometimes when I try to pester people, I'll throw a wink in, like almost like my, my last little dig yeah. on, on the issue kind of thing. You've but done this that is a whole to other, me for this sure. This is a whole other issue here. This bro. guy's hard to read over text too sometimes. So, so he'll be <laughs> goading me on text and then randomly I'll get a wink and I'm like, okay. Yeah. He's yeah. just revving me up here. Yes. Yeah. And most of the time I'm <clears> sitting there with a smile on my face, kind of enjoying the moment, but people giggling might think I'm coming across a little bit like, you know, ready to throw down here or something yeah yeah <laughs> you, you just sit there giggling away kicking your feet while you text people mean stuff eh? that's just it yeah yeah that's i it. like it that's I like it, it. <laughs> it's like, you got it all right well we're gonna head out here in a second uh join us for kickoff at the neighborhood church this weekend two through three pine house drive six o'clock on saturday 11 on sunday in warman at lions park 4 p.m that's it's right. It's going to be good. It's going to be good to hang out with people. You're going to get some good food. Uh, Pastor Louis is going to bring us a message to kick off this year. And uh, we're going we're gonna to do fall stuff. It's going to be fun, eh? So much fall stuff. Awesome. So uh, are you ready to head out? Yeah, let's PTL for our PSL and get out of here. All right, PSL. Episode 16 next week. Unedited is a ministry expression of the Neighborhood Church. Hosted by Ethan Andrews and Jordan McClellan. Produced by Ashley Drayton. Voiceover by me, M. Curry. Watch us on Instagram, YouTube, or Facebook, or listen on Spotify or Apple Podcast. Thanks for listening.